Well, let's start right there. Let's just. Yeah, good. You, you are a professor of philosophy specializing in the philosophy of physics. Yeah. So, what is the philosophy of physics in modern times? Because I know what it was in the day. Because in the day. What's the day? Antiquity or the Renaissance? No, Newton. Newton. Yeah, Post Galileo. Uh, okay. Newtonian world. View. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, back then. Scientific revolution. Yes. Yeah. Back then, uh, philosophers were physicists. I mean, they That's were right. one and the same. That's right. And in fact, the Newton's greatest work has the word philosophy. The word physics isn't even, isn't even in the title. That's right. The Principia doesn't even have equations uh, I, I, in the first oh, part. Okay. It, it's yeah. it, uh, that the title is. Well, in Latin, but it's the mathematical principles of natural Rational. philosophy. Okay, that's right. Natural philosophy. Natural philosophy. Same thing? Yeah, yeah. Natural philosophy was right. physics. It's the deep thinking about how nature works. Okay. Yeah. So we got that, but into the 20th century, you get quantum physics, where you can't deduce from an armchair, and you have <laughs> right. expanding universe. Right. Who thought that up? Right. Right. And so all and the confirmation of all these things that were mathematically postulated and then proven to be exactly. the actual case. So what yeah. I've noticed yeah, yeah. was uh -huh. that there was a sort of a separation of the turf. The philosopher couldn't really contribute to physics unless they were actually a physicist. You could still think philosophically, but you needed to be in the lab. You couldn't just sit back and observe and think hmm. deep thoughts. Well, about Einstein was never in a was. lab. Right, but he was a physicist, <laughs> not a philosopher. I don't think he would make that distinction. Let, uh, let me say it differently. Okay. He was trained as a physicist, not trained as a philosopher. In the German university system in which Einstein and Schrodinger and Bohr and all these guys were trained, they learned a hell of a lot of philosophy. I'm not saying people didn't have philosophy chops. I'm saying if you go to school to be a philosopher, in the 20th century, Fair enough. you became less and less useful to the moving frontier of the physical sciences. That's the only point I'm making. Now go. Unless you're going to bust that open. Well, the first thing is I don't accept your premise that in order to that's do what I do. That's how you start an argument. That's how you start an argument. I think we're, start well, and win we're, an argument. Well our, we're well on our way into a philosophical debate. <laughs> <laughs> your premise is invalid. Okay, go. The idea that what I need to do is be useful to science to be important or worth doing as a human endeavor is a pretty narrow view. Except that's how it used to be. And that's, that's uh, some- How I'm, what used to be? Philosophers were useful to the moving frontier. Of, there, you have Kant thinking up stuff that it, it, the nebular hypothesis was kind of cool. And you, you had- uh, So Einstein's own ability to get uh, the theory of special relativity had to do with his taking a, study, a, a different approach than Lorentz and Poincaré and others who were looking for a similar theory. Yes, mm -hmm. entirely. So let's step back and say, we have these data, let's I understand agree. them a different way. I'm not saying- Now, if you're saying it's about how we specialize into different disciplines, yes. Yes. That is something that naturally occurred as our measuring apparatuses and our technology got better. Got it. We were able to be like, because, and you go to a conference in astrophysics nowadays, how many talks do you even are interested in talking, like hyper specialized, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fair enough. Yeah, I publish a paper, 100 people in the world will understand it. Or, or no, yeah. 100 people in the world will care about it. Right. <laughs> For me, it's like maybe six. Oh, this works. They're my buddies, oh my you know? Okay, yeah. Okay. It's like when people are like, oh, how do I find you in the internet? I'm like, Google Elise and philosophy of physics, because I think I'm the only one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so let me, let, me, let me just, let me back up as a lay person and kind of broaden the view here. The intertwining that Neil was talking about that existed at one point yeah. that you now say has kind of dissolved yeah. because of highly specialized training. Yeah. Where does that intersection happen now? Good, yeah. Good question. That's great. And I think that's exactly the question we wanna, um, mm -hmm. so you were asking, am I, gonna am I gonna blow it open now? Yeah. I think the fringe, like the edge of, the edge of science along. right now, is in this place. We're getting beyond our means to empirically test. And you know, as a cosmologist and astrophysicist, there's a limited amount of data that we- On that frontier, yes. On that frontier. Yeah. And that's true also in looking for quantum gra theories of quantum gravity. Yeah, all of that. Uh, I mean, we haven't yet found conclusive evidence for the Lambda CDM model that is only for the Lambda CDM model of cosmology. It's the best we have right now. But it's it the might... cold dark matter and, and right. dark energy. It's just the concordance, mo like the model we think yeah. is the best model yeah, of the got, universe right I, I now. Just catch people up. So we we know the universe is accelerating in its right. expansion, and 
what's causing that we call, call dark, dark energy. energy. Right. We just call it that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We don't know. But it's a black box quite okay. literally. And then yeah. dark matter right. is a mysterious source of gravity in the universe. In fact, it's 85% Percent of the universe's universe gravity. And we don't know what that is either. But if we assume it's a thing, because we measure it, right. and then we can calculate with it, and with some assumptions about the behavior of matter, we get a sort of a kind of our own standard model of how the universe works. It's called lambda CDM, oh, lambda cool. cold dark matter. And we, we work with it, it gets us some understanding. Yeah, it does some good work it does, for we, you. It does some good, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it, it's well, our we workforce, don't have direct... but it's not a complete, it's yeah. not a complete picture. It's a complete theory, right. okay. Right, so this is true in a lot of arenas of physics, and so what philosophers of physics can do, although I think there are many ways to be a philosopher of science, is general, not just that, like you're trained in philosophy, but you sort of ask philosophical questions of science itself. So this ties into your early questions, like something about the um, extreme specialization has meant that in particular, the way we train physicists in the US, even at high, in high school, is so divorced from the deep questions about, but why, hmm. but how? Hmm. It's about following a we scientific say in the US, method. Did you study abroad? No, but I, um, when I, um, I've studied, I've looked at education policies uh, in other countries and sort of, really? it's it's no surprise that, that we're our, messed up. That we're, <laughs> we're not, you know, our, we're still the best, best place to go for STEM at the graduate level. Right. Um, but that's, we're losing that. Yeah. And there's a history about that. In particular, there were decisions made in the Cold War era to train people in science in a particular way that was going to get technologies built, that was going to be good for industry Results and for oriented. the Department of Defense. Right. That's right. Weaponry. And it became not just not in vogue, but like it in became- In fact, I have the original document in this office. Which, of the of the NSF creation of-, of Yes, of, of, I have yeah. that document. Can I, can, I, can I reach for it? Yeah, show it, make, show make, it to make, us. Yeah. Let's have a visual here. This is what you were talking about. Yeah, Vannevar Bush. Let's let our people at home- Making check. a case for why America needs to preserve and fund science. And it, everything I know and think of about how science happens in the United States, when I pull up this, original document, it's all there. And so I have, maybe, is it a bias? I say, that's how you do science. But it's how you do are you suggesting there's another way to do science? I'm suggesting that when you get to the level of how we educate, when you divorce, you, you understand science is a thing that's about usefulness and right. application. Yes. Right. That is one very small color from a spectrum of colors. And I'm also suggesting that when we look at people who are trained in the history and philosophy of science, along with the science itself in high school, they're testing off the charts in there. Mm. There's something about like being able to answer that or ask that why, why are we using this equation to solve for the energy level of a hydrogen atom? Why that are never we understanding... showed up in any of my classes. That's right. That's, That's absent. Right. Were you taught, you were taught, it's amazing. I was to me taught that... physics as a thing, yeah. not as a way of thinking. That's I had right. to like realize that it was a way of thinking, yeah. and, and bring to it the bit of philosophical meanderings that I had engaged in my life. Right. I had to bring that to the physics. Right. That was not there That's when right. it was taught. And you're told and, 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 not and, to have it there, right? And, like, and, well, not sometimes. explicitly. Okay. It's, not, it's not encouraged, and it's not rewarded. Okay, let me ask this. So what is it about asking these big questions? The why um, questions. The big yeah. why questions. What is it about that that contributes to the guiding principles of science yeah. itself. Because there's no one recipe for how to do good science. Hmm. Okay. Okay, it is true. When I go to my different, everybody's got their own angle on science, it's true. Right. There, there was no centralized right. approach. Right, well, but even if there so were. So you're telling me that this <laughs> centralized our approach not to our greater good. I think it, did in some ways to a greater good because I mean Vannevar Bush wanted the inner core of funding for NSF to be pure science. As he it thought there was is. always supposed to be a part of it. Whatever funding is left of it at the moment. <laughs> As of let us hang our heads the in real a moment question of silence. Is, do oh, I man. get a plane from the NSF? <laughs> but did you know that if you drop a magnet into a glass of water, it loses its magnetism? Yeah, he said that. <laughs> he said that. I love it. He said that. Yeah. And by the way, I'm still right. <laughs> but it has to be avion one. It just has to be. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you.